Welcome to my comparison between a gas blowback AEG and spring gun for airsoft. What should you get as your first gun? Here I have a gas blowback pistol, but we're going to pretend this is a spring pistol. What that's going to mean for you, it's probably not going to be made of metal. It could be, but that don't mean it's more expensive. But the biggest pro is, well, it's extremely cheap. These pistols are extremely cheaply made, but also that means it's ex extremely cheap for you to buy. Very, very low cost, easy for you to pick up. You know, if you're having a hard time convincing your parents, that might be easier because it's really cheap. Ten, twenty dollars can get you one. But that also comes with poor quality. It's gonna be, usually be made of either cheap plastic or really, really cheap metal. Obviously, it's not gonna look this nice because this is a gas blowback. I simply don't have a spring pistol, so I have to demonstrate with this. Safety is unlikely to work, but it could. Slide catch is not going to work. Trigger is going to be quite tough. And the slide is going to be very hard to pull back. But one of the biggest pros is all you need is BBs to shoot it. Shoot it anytime, anywhere. You don't need any gas and you don't need any batteries. So you're going to pull the slide back every time you want to shoot. It's probably not going to come back all the way, like with the gas broke crystal. It might only go to about here. And, of course, the side catch is not going to work. So it's going to be extremely difficult, well, not extremely, but it's going to be quite difficult to pull back because you're pulling back against that spring. Once it's cocked, you get one shot. That BB is probably going to be going somewhere around 250 FPS, which is decent, but certainly not good enough for your average outdoor field. The FPS itself might be good enough for your indoor field, However, because of the extremely slow rate of fire of cocking it every single time, that's going to make it unviable for CQB. So where do these pistols stand? Well, these pistols are good for plinking around in the house because they don't have a very high FPS, they're easy to use, they're extremely cheap, and they don't hurt that much compared to a nicer gun like this. So you and your friends can have a nice time in the backyard plinking around, but of course, as always, I took the orange tip off for this review purpose. But when you're messing around with an airsoft gun, keep the orange tip on. And even with the orange tip on, I highly recommend not playing in your backyard in view of the public. Unless you contact your neighbors or something because it can be mistaken for a real gun. Now, on to the gas blowback. Oh hey, the same gun's back because this is an actual gas blowback. There's two categories of gas blowbacks. You have your CO2 blowbacks and your green gas blowbacks. Of course, I'm talking about pistols, not rifles here. This is a CO2 blowback, but a green gas blowback works the same way. So we're actually going to go over that first. Green gas blowback stores gas in the magazine. Turn out of propane or green gas. It is much cheaper to operate, I will say that. Wait, what? I'm being dumb. Green gas is not cheap. Green gas is real expensive. What do you use propane? It is much cheaper to operate than CO2. But it's still much more expensive than a spring gun. Gun itself usually will range anywhere from 60, 70 to a nicer one up to like 150. This is, as I said, a CO2 blowback, but a gas blowback looks the exact same pretty much. Works the same way. Slide comes back, you cock it, hammer. Hammer drops and you pull the trigger. And then that causes the knocker to release gas into the nozzle, pushing, forcing the slide back, the chamber another round, and at the same time it pushes a BB at the barrel. Green gas blowbacks usually, depending on the model, have quite good gas efficiency, but they do not work well in the cold because the mags will freeze up. Usually have a capacity of anywhere from maybe 15 to up to 30 rounds. So yeah, that's about it for the green gas blowback, and you do get that nice feeling, of satisfying feeling of some light, crisp recoil. Now onto the CO2 blowback, which is what this is. As I said, it works the same way, except it uses these mags called CO2 canisters. Most all guns use 12 gram CO2 canisters like this. These are quite expensive compared to green gas, I mean compared to propane, but if you use green gas, it's about the same, so it shouldn't matter anyways. So yeah, that's pretty much the only downside of CO2 is it's expensive. 
Other than that, it's going to give you much nicer kick recoil in general because it's much higher pressure. In some cases, it could give you nicer gas, nicer gas efficiency. It can give you more FPS, but that depends on the gun. So it, it is a common misconception that if you put CO2 in your gun, it's going to magically shoot like a million FPS. Simply not true. And of course, magazine capacity. Depending on the gun, it might be slightly lowered. This one's 17. It can also range up to about 30-ish. But because CO2 takes up more space, or can take up more space, that can be limited. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, it works much better in the cold than propane and green gas. Small demonstration, your nice recoil. So yeah, recoil is very nice. By the way, these guns can shoot anywhere from 280 to up to 400, 500 FPS. 400, 500 is going to be extremely rare. I only know of one gun shoots that, which is the GNG Extreme 45. Most of them are going to be anywhere from 280 to 350, just like your green gas blowbacks. Now to the AEG. These are usually going to be more expensive than gas blowback pistols, but not necessarily rifles. This will probably be cheaper than the gas blowback rifle, depending on the model you get. Now this is a fairly cheap one, but they all work the same way, with a gearbox. A motor pulls a spring, pulls a plunger back that it goes against spring resistance and then releases it. Which pushes forward on the plunger, oh whoops, pushes forward on the plunger, which shoves air through the barrel and pushes the BB out. It's that simple. Now these are much harder to maintain, I will tell you that. If not necessarily maintained on day to day use. But rather, if something in the gearbox breaks, it's much harder to fix, or to replace parts. Okay, so yeah, these are usually rifles, because, I mean, electric pistols are uncommon, and usually they're not very powerful. These guns, big advantage is generally your full auto. Some gas box pistols can be full auto, they're quite rare, quite expensive, and quite unreliable. These have nice full auto. Almost all of them are full auto, and they go anywhere from maybe 600 to up to 1200 rounds per minute for stock guns. Of course, you can customize it, upgrade it, get insane, F I mean insane rates of fire. They run off batteries. Batteries are cheaper than gas, because batteries, you buy one of them, they last you a long time because they're rechargeable. Gas, you have to constantly keep replacing. Trigger pull on these are generally squishy compared to the realistic trigger pull of the gas blowback, which I don't like. Generally no recoil. There's a little bit of vibration from when the piston slams against the piston, the, I mean the front of the, uh, what's it called, cylinder head. But um, that's not really recoil per se. Um, these generally, let's see, because they run off a of battery, they have... Uh, you don't have to constantly, constantly replace gas. Uh, one battery charge lasts a long time. You have options between nickel cadmium batteries and like lithium batteries. So yeah, these are generally the airsoft gun that you think of when you think of airsoft. So yeah, um, magazine, magazine capacity. You can get them low cap, thirty rounds, which are quite rare, but that's for realism. You get mid cap, which I like the best because you don't have to wind it, yet it gives you a nice solid 150 rounds usually. And then you have high caps. You have to wind it every like 50, maybe 100 shots, but they hold a lot of ammo, so you very rarely have to reload. And winding is generally better than reloading. Downside, they're not realistic, but they hold up to like 400 shots, which is very nice. And of course, you can go crazy with the drum mags, but we're not going to go over that. So here's how they sound, usually quite loud. Now the sound is slightly changed because I have this on here, but that shouldn't make a huge difference. Here your full auto. There you go. Okay, so 
Hope that helped your decision. All of them are very good choices other than Spring for a real Airsoft game. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Also, sorry, I forgot to mention something very important. These pistols are semi-auto, usually. Well, they're always semi-auto. By usually, I mean usually not full auto. As in, pull trigger once it shoots, pull trigger again it shoots. You do not have to cock it every time like a spring pistol. I want to make that very clear. Thanks for watching.